YouTube, Jerry Kirkpatrick here. And the other day I was working on some aluminum pieces. These are 3003, uh, 06 thickness. And I got them finished forming. And I put them together to start welding with my TIG. Uh, I was thinking about gas welding them, but I thought I might uh, TIG weld them. I did some of these in 1963. Almost all of them were with a TIG. I did a couple with the uh, oxyacetylene just to get, get a hand at, uh, at welding them. And I wasn't sure whether I wanted to use a 16th tungsten. Uh, since this is 06, it's right on the cusp whether I'd want to use a, a, a 16th tungsten or a 332nd tungsten. And whether I wanted it sharpened or a slight ball on it. So I started to do some test pieces. I hadn't welded with this machine for quite some time with aluminum. Almost everything I've done for the last year or so has been uh, steel. So it would give me the high frequency start that I wanted so I could go ahead and weld steel. So I tried a, <laughs> a test piece with the 16th. And as you can see, with this piece, I could not get it to join at all. And I tried uh, several times. I couldn't get get either piece to, to join and start to flow. And then I noticed that I only heard the high frequency when I started and then it shut off. So that's why it's so dirty. It had no cleaning. And I've had this problem before, probably back in the 90s somewhere, where the, the points had gotten dirty high frequency points had gotten dirty and they weren't giving me the high frequency that I need. I did some research and found that this machine is a P&H, a harness figure. Uh, it's a 300 HFGW machine. The patent on the machine <laughs> was from 1947. Uh, with researching the serial number on this machine, this machine was made in 1958. So it ain't brand new. I've had one of these machines exactly like this since 1972 when I started my first uh, business down in Venice, California. So that's one of the reasons I haven't bought one of the, one of the newer machines with, with all of the different adjustments. I know the machine. I know how to use a pedal. Uh, I don't need all the fancy dials, you know, for, uh, slope and all of that stuff. Uh, I've just welded a ton with this machine, so I know it. That's why I decided to go ahead and clean. I used some 800 grit sandpaper. I took the points out. I'll show you those a little bit later. Uh, I took them out put them on a flat surface, a piece of glass, and then by hand, just honed the, the two flat surfaces. So I got that, uh, it got them cleaned, put back together, 
and the information that I found on the internet said that they should be set, the gap between the points should be set at six thousandths. So I tried with this second set here and it still wasn't cleaning as you can see up on the top here and I couldn't get it to run a good uh, a good bead so I quit right away uh, I only <laughs> went a short distance and then I adjusted the points to eleven thousandths tried it again and it would weld but it wasn't cleaning near the way I liked and the the bead just wouldn't flow out as as I I thought it should so I increased the 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 width to 16 thousandths and I started getting a, a pretty good pretty good bead as you can see in the in the top portion of the this next uh, coupon here I went up to 20 thousandths gap on the points and that made the the bead much broader and just flowed out I didn't like the way that looked at all so I came back down to 16 thousandths gap and that's this last portion here and you can start to see the little white uh, markings that uh, are from the high frequency so now that I've got got it set to 16 thousandths let me show you what the points look like So this is what the three, or actually two sets of points, there's three different pieces that uh, make up the points. You can see the gap that goes there and there. Okay, that's it. I've got everything uh, set the way I want it. I'm going to put the machine back together, weld these pieces up. Uh, <laughs> you'll see these pieces in another vid video. I'm waiting for a phone call for the customer to let me know when he's ready to install these pieces. When I get that phone call, I will show you how uh, how I manufactured these pieces. I'll make a second video on installing them. I think you'll you'll like these two videos. So thank you very much for watching. Like and subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. Buy me a coffee if you have a have a mind to. If I'm lucky, I'll see you in the next one.